So we have our Rajesh Paheti, MD at Cross Seas Capital Services, joining us now. Uh, Rajesh, uh, you know, the markets have been grinding lower, uh, but there's no panic. So does that mean that we really haven't seen a bottom yet? And uh, perhaps uh, we could see uh, lows even lower than 7916, uh, which we saw recently. Absolutely. Markets have been grinding lower, you know, as it is have headwinds because a lot of capital is expected to move into America because of the fiscal stimulus that uh, people expect uh, Donald Trump administration to provide uh, uh, domestically into America. So a lot of capital might already be uh, looking at moving into uh, the U.S. instead of uh, India. At the same time, now we have uh, uh, now, uh, you know, some uh, if ill effects of demonetization are being felt and uh, and numbers are being crunched so as more and more numbers get crunched by analysts i think a lot of downgrades are likely to follow at least in the short term now uh, everybody will wait for the response of the government post uh, the 31st uh, of december i think you know that's when this uh, first leg of demonetization that is deposits into the banks will end and the government has kind of hinted that you know some changes are in the offing for the future now, I think uh, till that time, as uh, you see the, those responses from the government, I think the market may not really uh, uh, get into a panic mode. It might just grind a bit, uh, grind a little lower by the end of the settlement, but would wait for, you know, what would the government's response be to the pain that has been caused the public. I think uh, and, and, and two events there are the, any announcement if uh, it happens post uh, 31st December, or the budget which is now advanced to 1st of February. So real panic, if at all, will set in, uh, would probably be post-budget uh, if uh, some of those uh, changes that one hopes do not materialize. But you're not expecting any big bang announcement on uh, re-monetization, on the IDS scheme, or anything, or, or, or say, you know, the Benami Act, or anything like that uh, coming in before the budget? No, so some of the schemes, those schemes are already into play, you know, but, uh, you know, uh, the, the economy has genuinely been hit. So it's not all uh, black money that goes into the system. A lot of small scale and the organized sector actually works uh, uh, on the cash system. And, and this is repercussions for employment within the country. So what the response of the government would be in terms of, uh, you know, giving incentives for non-cash payments, you know. Last time we saw some incentives being given, but they're, you know, half percent, 0.75 percent, 1 percent. I don't think those are the kind of incentives that is going to lure anybody into a cashless economy. So uh, one has to really take a big, bold, comprehensive view of the whole thing and give maybe a 10, 15 percent uh, uh, set off. Uh, extra set off if uh, one adopts the cashless mode. I think those are the kind of steps if they come in, then you would expect that the economic uh, output would pick up again. But if it's just uh, chasing black money holders, if it's just uh, trying to convert some of the black into white by paying off taxes, I think it's not going to address the long term problem. So the, the market and I think the public is looking at the next big thing in terms of how do you structurally re, uh, reshape this economy into a more cashless system. Otherwise, you know, if the RBI does not release, uh, you know, 15 lakh crores back into the market and we're stuck with, say, five or six lakh crores and no big bank steps are taken in, I think then uh, the economy is going to shrink and we're going to have big repercussions, huge repercussions for employment and consequent demand. So I think uh, everybody is looking at the budget and what happens post 30th December to see uh, how uh, the government reshapes uh, this economy. But then what do you do till you get to the budget? Because our markets have been falling since September. And, uh, you know, post um, November 8 decision, we have seen sustained selling from FIIs. Yes, it slowed down, but it's, they're still se selling. So what happens till, uh, fe till uh, February when the budget is announced? You keep rounding down, become range bound, we see a recovery. What's your expectation? Yeah, so one, obviously, you know, January uh, traditionally has been a big month for the markets. I don't know this time January will be a big month or February will be a big month. But you're likely to see a big month, you know, in the next uh, month or two. 
and uh, what do you do so uh, basically i am quite shocked that despite the fact that you have so many uncertainties you also have the inauguration of the american president and uh, history tells us that the year the new president gets inaugurated has not uh, been so historically great for the markets uh, you can go back in time and you'll see that those years have not been traditionally been very very good for the markets so uh, you've got a lot of uncertainty and yet i think the ivs are uh, very very low in the market so maybe the people are expecting that nothing much would happen but i think uh, one of the strategies could be to simply buy call and put spreads on both sides uh, for january or february i think they're both available reasonably uh, cheap uh, february you have the budget also so i think uh, that has not been priced in and just uh, wait to see which way the market goes i think you would be rewarded if you were to buy just call and put spreads uh, and and just uh, wait out because i think you're going to see 5 uh, 600 points uh, move on the nifty uh, within the next 60 to 90 days right and that 5 600 point uh, could be any which ways right and that's why you're saying buy both call and put app absolutely you're sitting right uh, in the middle of this action i think 8000 is what you might call the 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 needle uh, at the center point equilibrium point and you could be looking at 7300 or 8700 i think uh, i would give equal chance to both these events happening right and you know right now can you just tell us what are the you know the scare in the market or implied volatility or premiums that one is paying it's still not very very high so when it actually moves say if it moves downwards you expect ivs to increase quite significantly that could also add to gains absolutely you know right now the market is giving you at the money ivs of about 13% uh, for january and about uh, 14% for february now do remember we have a february budget right up front i think 1st of february so february ivs are likely to spike you know as uh, the jan settlement kind of uh, gets midway uh, we are ending the december settlement so there's no point in doing anything in december but even jan at 13 for the at the money is reasonably low given uh, where we are in terms of uncertainty in the market so i think uh, just uh, buying january or february uh, either of those uh, would make sense Uh, I would prefer February because uh, a you get more days, so the theta loss, uh, the time value loss in those options is less. And given the fact that there is a huge event uh, which is going to decide the course of this uh, economy more than I think the previous three budgets, uh, I think uh, they're very very reasonably priced. You know, seven thousand nine hundred has been defended a couple of times. Do you think there will be a lot of put writing activity that happens over there? and say if it breaks and it's the third time that we are testing it breaks it then probably you know what happened on 27th of uh, november and uh, then now again do you think if it doesn't hold on to that level it could create a huge downside in the near term itself it's possible but uh, you know uh, you traditionally we see a little bit of a pre budget rally in the in the indian markets and and this time the budget is advanced by a month so whether or not we'll see that crack uh, before the budget i don't know uh, but yes it's entirely likely because technically once 79 breaks then you know uh, the next number you look at is probably all the way down to uh, 72 72 50 and and the uh, and the technical analysts then get into the system and and start uh, uh, talking down the market and those uh, things do happen in uh, in our uh, in our system and uh, everywhere else so uh, 7900 is a key level uh, people might be selling puts right now but i think uh, just given the level of uh, ivs in the system uh, i think uh, any uh, whether or not you're writing puts or calls uh, 100 points away if you're doing it just for the next uh, couple of days it may be okay but if you are planning to think that uh, you know the nifty will defend 7900 and if it doesn't then i think there will see a huge spike in vol as well as the move will get accentuated and you could look at 77 76 in a jiffy right you know as far as uh, financials are concerned you know i'm talking about mfi something like a sks microfinance uh, you know which has done pretty well in the last 3 years you think such sort of tent or price action that you're seeing Uh, it will never lead to such high pe or high confidence in the market at least in the near term what it was trading earlier
You know, every mini bull run or every bull run sees a new set of uh, stocks that take the market to a new high and, and the darlings of the market. Uh, every four years there's a new uh, sector that becomes a darling of the market and typically uh, those stocks get overpriced by uh, at least 50 to 100 percent from where they should be. So if you look at the fact that uh, three months ago these stocks were trading at valuations uh, which of course at that time uh, the analyst community and everybody will tell you that these continue to look good and uh, the stocks will go up uh, even further because the, 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 the whole scenario is so rosy. But uh, we've seen that, that once uh, they go out of favor and the tide turns, uh, it can be pretty nasty. And especially for the B group, uh, things uh, reaction can be pretty nasty. So whenever the market reacts, say, 10 to 15 percent, the average stock in the B group, uh, I think, is down 35 to 40 percent. And the market comes down by 20, 25 percent, then, you know, the stocks in the B group come down by uh, uh, 55 to 60 percent. So those are the kind of levels you've got to be aware of that whenever the market kind of tanks, that these stocks are going to react 30, 40 percent uh, in the blink of an eye. And uh, it will take a long, long time for these stocks to regain their glory, if at all they do. Because uh, the entire scenario changes and the next market or the next bull market will see a fresh set of stocks that will take the market higher. It's not usually the same set of stocks that take the market to back to the same old levels. Right. And uh, in terms of, you know, some of the names like IT, some of the names like Pharma, which probably went through that back in 2013 and they never recovered after that fall. Now you believe that as the time has come, maybe 17, 18 could be very good for these tech sectors which have not performed well so far? No, uh, I think there are a couple of structural problems uh, in India. I think uh, it's difficult to buy uh, value stocks in India because uh, dividends are taxed very, very heavily and the dividend yields therefore consequently in Indian stocks continues to remain very, very low. Uh, globally, if you see a lot of value investment takes place when dividend deals get very, very attractive, typically over bond deals. In India, I think the bond deals are still at 7, 7.5% and dividend deals are close to 2%. So you never get into uh, a situation where you're going to say this is a value pick and it's time to buy those stocks. Unfortunately for Infotech and Pharma, at best, they could be called value picks. But uh, given the fact that, you know, dividend deals continue to be at 2%, you know, uh, it's going to be a problem. I think unless the laws in our country change to allow people to invest in stocks to earn dividends, uh, I think uh, it's going to be rather difficult for uh, out-of-favor sectors, which are not showing the kind of growth they've shown in the past, to really uh, come back. Of course, they're safe hiding places. They may not go down too much. But uh, to see them go back to uh, highs uh, would be a challenge. And, and you do uh, have, uh, in, especially in the infotech sector, a real problem in terms of what the policy of the new administration in the U.S. will be. Right. You know, uh, you, of course, you don't trade the global markets, but you track them very actively. What is the sense that you're getting in terms of, you know, the developed markets versus the emerging markets? The trend that we are seeing, especially after uh, the U.S. presidential election outcome, uh, do you think that flow trend itself has changed? People want to buy developed markets versus emerging markets, which was not the trend uh, a couple of years back? Well, uh, I think, you know, a few emerging markets, the ones that we don't normally talk about have done remarkably well in the last year. Uh, so uh, it's not that, you know, the emerging markets only means India and China and Indonesia or, or a couple of other big markets. I think a lot of smaller markets, uh, even let's say Pakistan has, I think, done uh, remarkably well in the last year. And they have clearly outperformed the, you know, the, the uh, markets in the U.S. And, and Europe, the developed markets. So, so it's going to be quite unpredictable in terms of, you know, putting... Uh, uh, genres and defining genres of markets and saying this market will go down and this genre will go down and this genre will go up. I think you've got to look at uh, individual economies and look at which economies are likely to benefit. Clearly, uh, there's going to be some kind of fiscal stimulus in the U.S. combined with a monetary tightening. So, you know, two forces at play that are, are going to act opposite to each other. You've had monetary uh, stimulus in the U.S. for the past five or six years. That is getting pulled back. But you're likely to see a lot of fiscal stimulus, domestic investment. 
uh, to spur the U.S. economy. At the same time, I think you're likely to see increased uh, protectionism uh, across the developed world, especially in the U.S. How this plays out uh, in terms of corporate profitability and money flows, I think are going to be hard to predict. But some of the old uh, correlations, I think, might return, which uh, had gone out of whack in the last year or year and a half. And uh, you, you've seen, you know, how bond uh, prices have reacted now. So uh, those kind of correlation where every asset class was doing well or every asset class was not doing well, I think uh, that, that was uh, unusual uh, only because, you know, the central banks around the world were writing puts, if I may use that term. Uh, and, and once the central bank stops writing those puts and tries to, you know, uh, form a base for stock markets or other bond markets, I think you're likely to see more uh, capital flows uh, where uh, the analysts feel uh, uh, you see growth instead of, you know, just uh, simple trade that uh, the central government is there to protect you every time the markets kind of shiver. Rajesh, thank you so much for taking out time for us.